Do you like wrestling trivia? Then check out the five-star match game, the Pro Wrestling Quiz Show. I'm Joe Gagne, and every episode, I grill three contestants with five rounds of power-packed wrestling trivia. We have over 30 evergreen episodes in the archives covering WWE, AEW, Japan, Mexico, and much, 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 much more. Play along at home and check it out today. Music. It's not just part of our daily lives, it's part of our wrestling fandom as well, and it has been for decades. That's where this show comes in. Music of the Mat, the podcast devoted exclusively to the music of pro wrestling, hosted by Andrew Rich. Hey, that's me. Each episode delivers a different topic with a variety of great guests, fun conversations, musical analysis, and of course, a heartfelt pun or two. New episodes drop every other Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcast app of choice. Check out Music of the Mat only on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Here we go! You're listening to the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Welcome to episode 49 of the Emerald Flow Show. We're a podcast on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. You can follow us on Twitter at Emerald Flow Show and listen to us on all of your podcast apps. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. And if you listen to us on Google Apps, uh, switch over to YouTube Music, I I guess, because that's going to be changing over in early 2024. And you can donate to the show at voiceofwrestling.com slash donate. I'm Gerard here with Paul. And Paul, we said we'd be back quick, and we are. Yes, because some of the things that we were predicting would happen did actually happen. And it was some surprising things as well. So I, oh, I felt sure. it was very appropriate to come back this quickly. Yes, and there's a lot to talk about uh but uh first we have to talk about um it was uh sort of broken in the media not by noah itself about what happened to kenya okada and yasutaku yano and they uh basically were charged with sexual assault or the japanese equivalent of it i can't remember the exact term but it, it covers that and uh it sounds like there was an incident with a woman before the night before uh the show that they disappeared on which is why probably everything the cops came to the venue is what i'm assuming happens um so but i think there's a lot of heat on noah for basically just pretending nothing happened and, and maintaining a wall of silence yes uh once i saw the announcement and everything i was like oh Okay, now everything that has happened makes absolutely perfect sense. So yeah, as you said, like from the way the story is that they did something to a woman the night before the show and um, like the show where they disappeared, which was, uh, which city was that? Which show was that again? That was, Do you remember which one, which show that was? I want to say Osaka, but I could be totally wrong. 
No, 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 wait, wait, wait. We know which city it is because it said which city the incident happened in. Sendai. Sendai. Oh, right. Um so before the show in Sendai, so they molested a woman, or again the translation isn't quite clear, but it's probably also to maintain the privacy of the person. Yeah. Um, which is fair enough. Uh, so something happened. They did something. Also, while represent like the way the article phrased it as well, while representing themselves as no wrestlers. So I think that's an additional thing on top of it as well. Right. Uh, so it very, very much kind of apparently like used their status to get access or something like that. Apparently. Um, and then the woman basically immediately afterwards like went to the police and like filed charges and everything. And just from the way everything happened, it seems likely that they were arrested at the venue because the police knew they were going to be there. Yeah. Because if you remember the way things happened at the Sendai show is they were announced, like they were still on the card as they were just like reading out the card. And then literally right after they did the card one down, they were like, oh, actually here's changes on the card. Kenya card and Yasu Takayano have been pulled. Or I don't even think they even said that. They literally were like, changes to the card. And I def- don't think they even mentioned their names anymore. And famously, Saito had to like wrestle in a street pants because he didn't even bring his gear. So like that, all of that makes a lot more sense now. And I think it's pretty safe to say that we won't see these two again. If yeah. they ever pop up anywhere, it will be on like low level It'll indies that don't have problems. Shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, promotions that don't have issues booking sex offenders, basically. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, these two are done and good riddance. Uh, but what do you think of Noah's silence on this? Uh, I I actually kind of understand it more now because because they did release like, them or cut them or they did release them. They did release them eventually. Yeah, so I I do feel like that probably was because there was a lot of like legal stuff involved now, right? Because you actually had to like walk like through like you actually had get lawyers involved and all of that and actually like you know like similarly to like the cm punk thing where like you had to actually like get this through the lawyers first before you can actually like just straight up fire them which is uh, what i assume happened here i couldn't they, they, both of them just got that, fired do you think they should have said something when they were fired um because obviously the, they, they should have been legally able to right so know. so here's the so here's where I'm, I, I have no idea if that's the case, but my speculation is, because as I mentioned, like the article said that, right, these two kind of were representing themselves as Noah wrestlers to kind right. of like get to where they were. So it could be that Noah doesn't really want to publicly say anything because there is also an attached legal proceedings by Noah against those two because that's of that. That's possible. And I feel like if that's the case, then I think that might explain why Noah is not really necessarily being transparent on this because they want to, because they can't talk because there is an act of legal proceeding. Mm. That would make because it can't because like because right the way it came out was because people just actually just looked at the police reports and were like, oh, so that's what happened, right? Well, it took so it's not like Noah could even like be like try and sweep this under the rug by not saying it in the statement if people just can find out themselves like pretty easily if if when they know where to look i guess that's the thing right and uh, it did get out like what six months later yeah so yeah i mean i don't even know what spurred it as well like i don't know if someone just stumbled across an article because they did get arrested like immediately right look it's not like it's breaking news that it happened that they just got arrested now Mm-hmm. yeah uh yeah i just don't know what the whole um process for handling this especially like japanese law is and as to like well how bad does noah look for not saying yeah some kind of thing i guess uh that would be someone to maybe explain someone else that would be familiar with the japanese legal system to explain yes. everything like yes, that yes that that would be my thing as well because yes if that is not the reason then yes noah absolutely looks bad like mm-hmm. if there isn't like a legal reason for not saying anything, then it definitely is not a good look on Noah's part. Where they should right, have just said like, like they they cut them, yeah, which everyone would expect if that was publicly known at the time that they would do. So they did that right, but uh, yeah, 
yeah, uh, we don't, I don't know about the whole other uh, process like that, but yeah, you're right. Um, it is very likely, well, because yeah, they didn't even say, it. right, that they didn't even do like a basic, like, oh, there was misconduct. That was literally just. Yeah, they could have they said, so they, they could have said some sort of misconduct because remember with, well, I mean, it's a very different thing, but all Japan still said with Hokuto Omori, he did something he shouldn't have and we were punishing him. Yeah. So, but I feel like, like the only re like explanation I have here that doesn't make Loa look bad because literally every other explanation makes Noah look bad is that there's a legal reason why they can't say it in the state. Right, right. Okay. So uh, we'll keep our eyes on that if anything uh, evolves. And if anyone knows anything about like Japanese mm -hmm. law or like, I don't know, because maybe if Noah said something that Okada and Yano could have countersued or anything, just let us know for some clarification on that and see uh, how Noah um, handled this. Although the question is, did them cutting them is that a sign of progress? I don't, I guess so. I mean, I mean, you can't really keep two people under contract that are like in police custody for sexual yeah, assault. Yeah, exactly. Like... But, you know, <laughs> would have that happened 20 years ago? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe. Yeah. So there's that, but it certainly doesn't help everything else going on with Noah. No, it's, I mean, obviously they're not at fault here at all. So, but yeah, it, it it definitely still has like it. It just adds to like a picture of like a promotion and turmoil, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, speaking of Noah's turmoil, sort of, we go to Stuff Navigation twenty twenty three on October twentieth at uh, Corken Hall in front of one thousand two hundred eighty fans. This was billed as Nakajima's last uh, match at Corken Hall in Noah, and we start off with. The dark match, Stalin Rogers and Kai Fujimura defeated Taishi Ozawa and Yu Owada in 704 with a missile kick from Fujimura on Owada. Solid enough opener. Um, I don't have anything else to say. Uh, although it's uh, interesting that I don't know like what is like the point of Stalin Rogers and Noah? Because he this is his like position a lot of the time, but they keep bringing him back. Yeah, it, it's weird. <laughs> like uh, it's... <laughs> Because I would have actually guessed that he would have joined good looking guys by now, but I right. doubt that's a thing because they had LJ join instead. So like now there's really no point in adding like a Stallion Rogers level guy. So yeah, I really don't get either what he's actually doing here. Like he wasn't even involved in a fall or anything. He's literally just like a lower card guy that just hangs around and does absolutely nothing. I mean, it's not as if companies in Japan have never used foreigners as like just like opening match guys and jobbers for years but i just don't know what the logic is spending this kind of money <laughs> on flying him in and everything uh just to do this sort of thing you know especially given how many people they are flying in these days yeah yeah I, like i said this could be going to like someone else where you see some potential in him because yeah. i don't feel like they see any potential in him i mean maybe it's like a because I think he's like a guy that hung out with Hideki Suzuki and Thatcher in WWE. Yeah. And I think that's how he got here. But like, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he was like, he's like such an essential guy where you couldn't just give the spot to someone where you're like, okay, let's give this guy a chance and see what he can do. Like, exactly. yeah, but like, for example, like a teriyaki level guy, like I was still having the next. Well, match. that's like a young guy with potential that you can. Exactly. You know, and you can put him and like, you can, like, if you put like, they, obviously, Teriyaki was still on his card, but like if you like substitute him out with Stalin Rogers, right? There's like that's nothing really dangerous here, except that like you have a younger guy where you can see if you can build him up and get familiar with your own young guys so they can like do stuff down the line. Uh, speaking of Teriyaki, uh, it was Ninja Back Alejandro and Teriyaki defeating Atsushi Kotoge, Seki Yoshioka, and Hajime Ohara in 10 minutes and 34 seconds with the Ninja uh, Bomb from Mac on Kotoge. Uh, this was a good, uh, I thought, like official opening match to the show, fast paced. And this is exactly the kind of matches that Teriyaki needs against like a bunch of uh, veterans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I feel like he won't be a heavyweight. Oh, he won't be a junior. I think he'll be a heavyweight eventually because he is quite tall. I think yeah. he just needs to fill out that frame. And I think then he will transition to heavyweight. And uh, then next up, uh, 
We had Shuji Kondo and Extreme Tiger defeating Hiroki and Junta Miyawaki in 9.35 uh, when uh, Kondo pinned Miyawaki after the King Kong Lariat. Uh, <laughs> it was just there, perfectly unoffensive. But uh, yeah, just <laughs> as we'll talk about it on the following show, uh, Junta continues to look at the lights. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Yeah. Uh... It seems like only the first ep- let's just say only the first episode of Monday Magic was non-canon. The <laughs> second one very much was. Uh, yeah, I I mean bringing back Extreme Tiger, I'm like, yeah, okay, it's fine, but again, he's like another guy where I'm like, he's okay, but also I'd rather have the spot go to like a younger, hungrier guy than him. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, because he can get like loads of like younger like luchadors that are like. At the same level as well, the Extreme they, Tiger they, is they, at they, now, they had but they can get better, right? Like Lancelot? <laughs> no, I was very much thinking. I was about to actually add it, uh, and I don't mean Lancelot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then next up, the Kazunari Murakami return match: Naomichi Marafuji, Takashi Sugera, and Kazunari Murakami defeated Hideki Suzuki, Saxon Huxley, and Shuhei Taniguchi in twelve fifty five. The cradle uh, from Marafuji on Taniguchi. This uh, got the crowd uh, awake. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. Although I did notice that Hideki's forearms on Murakami looked very soft for Hideki forearms, let's just say. <laughs> did you notice that? Yeah, yeah. He seemed to be playing it a bit nicely with him as well. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm not even sure Murakami should be wrestling. No, he shouldn't. Yeah. I, I mean, I will say he was moving around a bit better than he was in his last run. Sure, sure. He did not look like Tenzon or something. Yes, but he was also like injured basically that entire run, which is why he eventually had to take off like two years. Uh, yeah, and he didn't but... wrestle for years. Yeah, exactly. Like, so he actually like gave his body some rest, but he still like doesn't look great. And yeah, I, I like I said, if this is just like a short term thing, so he's like, hey, yeah, I can actually wrestle again. Yeah, feel good moment, nice. But I don't hope. I hope he's not becoming a regular again because mm-hmm. he wasn't very good. He's like just isn't very good. That's just the thing. Yeah, and then uh, Hayata and Ata defeated Dog and Yoshinari Ogawa in eleven twenty five with the crucifix hold from Hayata on Ogawa. It is what it is. Hmm. <laughs> this continues. At least it at least it only went eleven minutes twenty five and not like uh, fifteen <laughs> minutes or whatever. I d- I have no use for this. I just but like just keep it like isolated to its own match so I can like I don't know go to the toilet in the meantime or something. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Kaito Kiyomiya, Ryohei Oiwa, Dragon Bane, and Alpha Wolf defeated Anthony Green, LJ Cleary, Yohei, and Tadasuke in fourteen oh seconds. In 14 minutes and seven seconds, when uh, Kiyomiya uh, pinned green, um, I thought this was pretty solid. Um, and I think that it's obviously also building to a tag title match and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I think green and, and Kiyomiya actually have pretty good chemistry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and I'm also happy to see that Kiyomiya is actually doing something of substance again because he was just like bright because. Basically, after everything happened with him in the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. he was kind of just like floating around aimlessly in the void for like months. At least now with like this tag team that he has with Weave, or he has like something he can actually sink his teeth into. Mm-hmm. So I think that's definitely a positive. But yeah, no, I, I, but yeah, I, I actually I think I am looking forward to like all four of these matches. Like I will say that actually the thing that interests me the most in Noah right now are actually like the tag title matches, basically. Uh, and then next up, Keno and he- El Hio de Dr. Wagner Jr. defeated Jake Lee and Jack Morse in 12 minutes and 36 seconds uh, when uh, Wagner pinned Morse with the Tiger Driver. And this was an interesting match because this was really more about Wagner and Morris than it was about Keno and Jake. <laughs> so, I mean, Keno and Jake had their heated exchange and everything like that. I thought this was a pretty good uh, match. Uh, and... You know, I thought it, it built up Wagner and, and Morris very well, but I don't think it really did anything for Keno and Jake. <laughs> no. And that was actually going to be my exact take as well. But like, I watched this match and immediately afterwards, I was like, okay, now I'm really excited for Jack Morris versus uh, Wagner. 
Yeah. And the other match, I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, I mean, they, they are trying to build the streak with this kind of match, but it feels so cold. And I feel like, I feel like, okay, we can probably talk about that after like the next show as well, where I'm like, I feel like I know who I can blame this on and it's not going to be surprising to anyone. Um, Well, I, I'll just say this because this morning I was looking at it. Paul, those Fukuoka tickets on Saturday do not look good. Uh, I yeah. do not have a WrestleTix chart, but I mm. go by the Lawson like circle triangle mm. X, which means circle means lots of tickets. Triangle means like, you know, you might want to get some tickets soon. And X means mm. sold out. Paul, the premium seats just have a triangle and everything else has a circle. Right. I mean, I can say, like, I, I mean, can pretty much say... more like, walk-up yeah. in Japan than there is in North America. Mm. But that's not good. No. Especially, like, you don't want that for, like, your expensive seats. Like, if I that's... saw that on an All Japan or a Noah Korokin show, I would guess that the turnout was going to be eight 900 people if just a couple days out, if, they, if it had that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, I mean, I can say that of, for like personal anecdotes, because obviously, as I've talked about loads of times before, going to Japan for New Year's. And so obviously I will be at uh, Noah, New Year, Noah the New Year show. And there is an international like sale already going on for tickets as well. Mm -hmm. And I am actually like I'm going there with someone else as well who will also be in Japan at the time. Uh, but I've told them that... Uh, I'm holding off on buying the tickets until after Jake versus Kenner. Because <laughs> quite frankly, if we go into that show with Jake Lee, then I'm fine with going like maybe not complete nosebleeds, but definitely cheaper tickets. Whereas if we're going into that show with Kenner as champion, then I'm like willing to be like sitting on the floor in the arena and like spending a bit of money. So yeah, I... I do you yeah. have uh, your Yogi tickets yet? Uh, no, the sale for those hasn't started yet. Oh. I, yeah. The prices the, the prices are out, mm -hmm. which are really fair. Mm -hmm. Like special, like pre, like the premium ring, premium tickets are 300,000 yen. Oh, no, really? 30, not 300, 30,000 yen. 30,000 yeah. yen. That's, that's, <laughs> that's expensive for All Japan premium show even, even for a big yes. premium show. But the yen to euro exchange yeah. rate is in the absolute toilet at the moment. Yeah. So it's actually more like 186 euros. Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. But then, but then the like, so like, but that's just the premium tickets. Uh, and then special ringside is 10,000 yen. So, oh, okay. yeah. Which I'm like, I'm, if I can somehow get my take hands on premium, I might actually do that for that show. Mm -hmm. And then, if not, I'm more than happy paying 10,000 yen for special ringside. Mm -hmm. Because by comparison, for the Noah show, second floor seats are 11,000 yen. Okay. So that's pretty reasonable so, price. Uh, um, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm more than happy paying that for like the all japan and maybe i'll even do like premium because i'm that's like the show i'm most excited for like for all of the pictures i'll be going to on that trip i mean we'll get to it later but it could very well be yes oh, that that mean because if we end up with jake lee against whom i'm on the new year the new year i'm like eh. and i already know the wrestle kingdom main event and i'm like i'm happy cheering for naito after he's won the title and that's all i care about in that match and the rest is like whatever mm -hmm. And in the main event, Katsuhiko Nakajima, final Noah Cork and Hall match. We had Go Shiozaki, Katsuhiko Nakajima, and Masa Kinemiya defeating Misaki Mochizuki, Manabu Soya, and Daiki Inaba in 1804 with the vertical spike from Nakajima on Inaba. I saw someone say that this didn't quite feel like a, a, um, a, like a, a dramatic match. And I sort of agree, but I thought this was really good. I thought this was like... Mm -hmm like a pretty great match and it's not even his final match um i don't know i mean i don't really see what you could have done because there's not much of a story other than nakajima's leaving and nakajima doesn't have that much of a history with any of these guys well maybe a well, on the other Nama. side yeah i feel like this story oh, like yeah, the story yeah. of this match was a lot more like nakajima and his tag partners obviously yeah yeah that's where the history is 
So because yeah, I agree. Like I mean, what sorry could you be? But like I thought they did some nice callbacks where like him like when it like broke down uh between Nakajima and Kitamiya. I thought that was a really nice call back to like them breaking up and having like a cage match for hair and all of that. So, you know, like there were callbacks, just not with the opponents. In this case, the, the important callbacks were like with the teammates, yeah. which is a weird structure, but I thought it was still a really great match. Yeah, so did I. Like I would uh, probably go like four on this, honestly. Yeah, around four. Yeah, for sure. I thought um, uh, Machizuki and Nakajiba had some great sequences. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that sort of really, I mean, yeah, not the most dramatic match. Mm-hmm. It's a little emotional after the match, but it was a very good match nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, oh, and, and I, can we just quick? Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot to say. Did I say this drew twelve eighty to Corkin? Yes. Which is good. That was literally by, what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. Which is good by Noah standards these days. No, I would say that's in general is pretty good. Like I yeah. think twelve thousand eighty. Like I think that's that's a very respectable number, and it is kind of fu- it is very funny that nakajima becomes a draw for noah as he's literally leaving the promotion mm-hmm. uh so no but i mean because like for example for comparison right uh like new japan had a car control just today like it was just a bunch of super junior league matches right, right. super junior tag league matches actually uh, but like you did have like a like television title match on there as well, so it wasn't like it was a completely nothing show. And they drew to uh, like one thousand twenty. Yeah. So like I would definitely say that like that's a really respectable number for Noah. Now, the question obviously is, can they keep up the Korokan numbers for like when they don't want like special event Korokans like they've done previous like recently, right? Because they've drawn all of these like bigger like Korokan numbers for like what I would call like event hurricanes, like yeah. Kento versus Nakajima, the Marufuji anniversary with Marufuji versus Osprey, or like this is like Nakajima's last hurricane in Noah. So, you know, if they have to do a run of the mill hurricane, I'm really curious what that number is going to look like. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't see it being good, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe Kato will uh, save them. I don't know. I mean, that, that, that is about the last hope we have at this That moment. is the last hope, <laughs> yeah. And then we go on to Monday Magic, episode two at Shinjuku Face that aired uh, yesterday on October 23rd. Uh, we start with Hayata defeating Dog in five minutes and 53 seconds. Honestly, if all Hayata matches would be this long, that would be great. <laughs> I thought this was pretty solid for what it was, like just mm-hmm. an opening match against guys that can be kind of boring if they're left <laughs> in a match for too long. <laughs> uh, although, uh, wasn't Daga like supposed to be challenging Hayata for the title? Yeah, that was going to be my exact so, point about this match. The dog right? is like, getting a push in ROH, or at least featured in ROH, so I think that has something to do with it. So you so think they be... were... Okay, but then, like, so did he just not tell them that he needs to be back in the US? And I don't they were, know. like, starting know. his push, and then they're like, Ah shit! You can't actually be here for that. Okay, we'll just blow this off in five minutes and Shinjuku face. Well, wow, that's kind of punishment too for just like. Yes, it would be, but I'm like, I don't know. Like that's just bad communication, I guess. I don't know who's at fault here if that's what happened. And then if that's not the case and he still challenges, then I'm like, why are you dropping out your challenger to the champion in five minutes? Yeah. Beforehand, that's just weird. Yeah, I don't know. It's. Whatever, it's five minutes. I'll take it as long as it doesn't mean we get like a 20 minute match between these two. I guess if that's the case, then fine. Mm-hmm. And then next up, uh, Saxon Huxley and Shuhei Taniguchi defeated Kai Fujimura and Yu Owada in 522 with a neck hanging bomb from Huxley on Owada. Like Fujimura and Owada, like double drop kicked them at the beginning of the match and everything. And, uh, you know, the kind of formula that you think it is. The young guys get the surprise, and then the old big veterans just take over and win decisively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very run of the mill. But you know what? I don't mind if we keep like, if we pivot to having like Huxley team with Tanaguchi and they're just this like undercar team that well, yeah, tag, because... that team that tags against like they're basically the new Funky Express. Then I'm fine with that. Hideki's gonna be busy somewhere else. Yeah. So, oh yeah, right, yeah, because it's an oh yeah, right, and also like Big Japan, yeah. So, 
you know what if if we just have that then like just make you know what just actually make them the funky express because i think that actually would work with huxley's look i well it's funny because i think hideki having one foot at the door i know is telling for some things too yes yes that probably means some of the like stallion rogerses and unfortunately also the timothy fatras might be not long either yeah um so uh, a heel to Dr. Wagner Jr., Extreme Tiger, and Teriyaki defeated Naomi Chimara Fuji, Alejandro, and Junta Miyawaki in 16 minutes and 14 seconds with a Yaki Crusher from Terry on ter- from Teriyaki on Miyawaki. This yep. Guy, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not saying it. I think they like Teriyaki, and I like Teriyaki, but it's just telling where like Miyawaki had been positioned at the beginning of this year or what it seemed like. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was actually pretty good. Yeah, and also just real quick to like head that off as well because we were like, right, we've been like speculating what the reason for like Miyawaki's like treatment is. Like, given what we know now, I don't think it has anything to do with the Yano and Okada thing. Oh, absolutely, like, not. I like, absolutely not. I thought like, honestly, it was like some sort of insubordination, and then maybe mm-hmm. Miyawaki was like the least insubordinate, so they just decided to punch yeah. him. But yeah, that I mean, it's a totally different thing. It was like an awful uh, assault. So, I no need to drag down like Miyawaki's no. uh, name in this. No, and, also, and again, this was this was when he was allegedly in Mexico. Allegedly in Mexico, I still think he like hung around with the two weed smokers, and maybe he didn't do it, but he was like too close to them, and that's why he's getting he, punished. Uh, he uh, he didn't inhale. Yes, he you know, he, you know, he just passively inhaled. That's the thing. <laughs> um, but yes, a very good match, I thought. Um, and I think Teriyaki is beginning to find his groove a bit. Definitely improved from the his first match. Yes, no, no, no. He seems to be catching on yeah. pretty quickly. So, like, it seems like wherever he like got like taught, like taught him some pretty good fundamentals. So. Yeah, I, I'm definitely curious to curious to see like how he develops long term. Mm-hmm. He's still like extremely young, right? He's like twenty He's 21. or something. Twenty one, yeah, geez. He's younger than most of the young boys. <laughs> um oh, he was trained by Air Fox and QT Marshall. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Well, not so much QT, but Air Fox definitely. Yes, definitely. So yeah, no, he can definitely he can develop and again. Good frame. If he fills that one out, like there's some like real potential. Yeah, there. well, he's listed. I'm just looking at his cage dress. He's listed here at mm-hmm. six feet even. Yeah, but he's only 100. Like, that's tall for Noah. But only 161 pounds, which is light yeah. for any junior. Um, next up for decision match for the GHC Hardcore Championship, Masaru Tanaka defeated Ninja Mac in 15-19 with a sliding D. Um. Tanaka was sort of like a surprise. Did they even announce it before the show? No, was- no, it was a complete surprise. It yeah. was basically we knew Ninja Mac was going to challenge someone for the title to determine the first champion. Yeah. Paul, I unironically enjoyed this match. <laughs> I mean, it was sort of ridiculous and it was a spot fest and it was a total ECW tribute match because like they were doing like, like, uh, Ninja Mac did like a Van Daminator and everything. Uh, oh, but, yeah, no, it was very it much was, a tribute thing. <laughs> but it was stupid fun and I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was fine for what it was. And I did kind I did kind of like like that it did. And like, Mac got a lot. Mac lost, right? But he actually got some like pretty good hits in on Masada Tanaka. Oh, yeah. Ninja Mac got quite a bit in. Yeah. And like he still looked strong in defeat because yeah, he fell to the sliding D, but he also literally had a chair wrapped around his neck when he was hit with the sliding D. So like I don't think he actually loses a lot. No. Losing this match. And I guess it makes the most sense to have a Masato Tanaka as your hardcore champ. I'm just where does the division go from here? And is this what know. all of the matches are going to be? Like, because I feel like this was nice as a one-off. But if this is what all of those matches are going to be like, I think it's going to outlive its welcome oh, pretty yes, quickly. Absolutely. <laughs> um, 
And then in the main event, and I should add, they did promos at the beginning of the show because this is clearly somewhat patterned off of American TV wrestling. Uh, so there was like a confrontation between the good looking guys and like um, the sort of Kaito's little army there before the show. Kaito uh, Gun. Yeah. Uh, and then we had the elimination match of Jake Lee, Jack Morris, Anthony Green, LJ Cleary, Johan Tadeske. Defeating Kaito Kiyomiya, Ryohei Oiwa, Manabu Soya, Masakinamiya, Dragon Bane, and Alpha Wolf in 2822. Uh, Kiyomiya eliminated Tadasuke, then Lee eliminated Wolf, Green eliminated Oiwa, Kitamiya eliminated Green, uh, Yohei uh, defeated uh, or eliminated Kitamiya, but it was over the top rope. Yohei uh, eliminated Dragon Bane, and then Soya eliminated uh, Yohei, and then Morris uh, eliminated Kiyomiya over the top rope, and Soya tossed Morris over the top rope, and then Lee did uh, like a running kick, his running high kick uh, to uh, Soya that was standing on the apron to win the match. I thought this was actually pretty good for the most part, and I thought the last couple of minutes between Lee and Soya was actually really good. Which makes me um, wish we had gotten a Lee versus Soya match. Yeah, that would have been great. Uh, my takeaway from this was, yes, I also enjoyed the match a lot. Um, but my thing is, who was the least interesting person in this match? Well, it was Jake until like the last two minutes. Yes, exactly. So I mean, I the real champion thought... is the least interesting person in an elimination match. Yeah, but he delivered at the end. I thought that, you know, that was good. He did. But again, I think that just points more to like a general like problem where like, okay, let's say you don't you don't change anything. Like the everyone, like the factions and everything is the same. But it's Ken to Miyahara instead of Jake Lee. Is he also going to be the least interesting person in this match? No, because Kento's gonna do a bunch of stuff to like uh liven up the crowd throughout. Yes, exactly. And that's why, you know, th like, that's the problem with Jake. He doesn't do any of that. Like, he never projects, like, this kind of, like, ace or, like, top guy energy. Like, if he was just, like, if this was, like, like for example, let's say, like, Jack Morris was, like, the top guy and good-looking guys, and Jake was just, like, his heavy, I think this whole dynamic would work a lot better. Because then Jake doesn't have to do the heavy lifting. Whereas I think it just looks bad if the guy that is supposed to be, like, the leader and the top guy is like the least interesting guy on his team. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that is the big build um, to Fukuoka. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, afterwards, Keno came out. Yeah, yeah. So, as we said, it might not do well, so I don't know. No. It feels well, very, like, it feels well, very cold. Like, I just really hope this, this and this Jake Rain, please. Now, if this show bombs, they still have to sort of go with Keno because there's no other choice, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I would just blame Jake for that because you have historical yeah. history for like Jake bombing on top. So you can't even blame Keno for it. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, so we move on to what everyone has been anticipating because, Paul, I've been seeing more and more people saying All Japan is back. Yep. Would you it's, agree that All Japan is back? Absolutely. Like I, I, I would argue it's been back ever since Yuma won it, but I'm happy that everyone else is finally catching up to our standard. Yes, absolutely. So uh, we go uh, to October 21st, raising an army memorial series in Korokin Hall, 1,340 fans. That is the second highest Korokin for All Japan this year behind uh, Nagata versus Miyahara. So that should be taken as a success. I already did it on the show where we were separated, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to do it again. And I'm just going to take my victory lap on the, my theory that uh, all Japan hardcores didn't want to go to the Korokan shows while all of the titles were on Outsiders. Because the moment they put the title on Yuma Aoyagi, those Korokan numbers shot right back above a thousand where they were at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Well, We'll talk about a certain outsider in the Triple Crown in a moment, I guess. Uh, outside in the Triple Crown? But how do you mean? Oh, uh, after the main event? 
Oh yes, yeah, 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 okay. But I feel like that one would be different. But because that one was just like all of the titles were on outsiders. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, no, I think definitely. Like, I feel like this outsider might not drag business down as much as. And again, it's not like Nagata dragged business down. That's not what I want to say. But like no. Karika business specifically, specifically yeah. about that because again, the evidence seems to be pretty clear here. Yeah. So to open the show, Atsuki, Oyagi, and Rising Hayato defeated Takao Mori and Yoshi Tatsu in five minutes <laughs> and thirteen seconds with the uh, Gaia Kuchi uh, from uh, Hayato on Yoshi Tatsu, which is like a crucifix hold slash bomb. Uh, okay. Sort of what I suspected when I saw this match. Uh, it was funny though. <laughs> yes, I had also a... Yoshitatsu. The look on Yoshitatsu's face after the match as well. Uh, but Paul, after the match, Yoshitatsu and Omori attacked the Saito brothers backstage. It is such a fucking I hate like. He just literally just tag, literally just used the tagline filler defense. So the Saito get a defense during their reign on it. <laughs> I this is like the worst booking that all Japan has done in months. Yes, yes. <laughs> So stupid. It's like you lose in five minutes to two juniors. Okay, the two highest juniors, but still, you lose in five minutes to two juniors in the yeah, opener. And then you're like, I could you know what? You. I have we have grounds to challenge the champions now. What the fuck? <laughs> um so from what I understand, Yoshitatsu was very upset and Omori was like, I got an idea. <laughs> Let's just book ourselves into a title match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I literally would have rather seen like Atsuki and Hayato, even though I don't like them getting dropped out, but I literally would have rather seen them have a tag title match. Oh, for sure. Because they can just bump around like crazy for the Saitos. Yeah, exactly. And then next up, special singles match. Dan Tamara went to a 15-minute draw against Shinya Aoki. Paul, I love this match. <laughs> this was just, I mean, I don't think everyone's going to love it as much as I did, but this is all like literally just grappling and holds. But it was just wrestled in such a great way. Dan is a good grappler. Aoki is very smooth in his transitions. And of course, you thought this match could end at any time. Yes. The way that they were doing this. So I just I went four stars on this. I thought it was awesome. Okay. I, I don't have this nearly as high as that because for me, it still felt a little bit too exhibition-y. But I thought they still did like it definitely vastly exceeded my expectations. And Dan obviously like loves doing this shit as well. And yeah. I thought Aoki looked a lot better than like, for example, he has seen has looked in a lot of the like UWF matches he's been doing in Glee. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, it 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 was good for what it was. I didn't love it nearly as much as you, but I can see why you love this match. Let's put it that way. And I mean, I thought Dan got some rub going to Yes, draw. going to a time limit draw because I fully expected Aoki to just win this. Yes. And then like five minutes. That was like my fear where like Aoki was just going to do his like silly too cool for school too cool for school bullshit and then just tap Dan out in like eight minutes or whatever. But no, he actually like they actually went the distance here and everything. So yeah, no. Good job. <laughs> and the next up we had All Japan versus DDT, Sanchiro Takagi, Hiroshima and Yuki Onaya defeated Suji Shikawa, Ren Ayabe, and Black Mensa Ray with a sit-down Himawari bomb from Takagi on Mensa Ray. Um, it was fine, you know, like interpromotional stuff is fine. But, I mean, I think there's a sort of a, a ceiling with some of the talent on here, but, I mean, it was solid enough. Uh, yeah, I. what I will say is like that I feel like the All Japan vs. DDT feud has just kind of like lost its focus a bit because mm -hmm. i'm not even sure what it's about like we label them as these and they're these like kind of like hot like quote unquote hot brawls so they kind of want them to be that but i'm not even sure like what set stake basically yes if we just do like one of these and yeah i don't know I don't really get where we're going here because again, I feel like there's too many people involved for it to be a coherent story. Like I liked it a lot when it was evolution versus uh versus burning. Yeah. Because that was like clearly the fine set of people. And now it's just like random DDT team versus random all Japan well, team. Well, Yuki Onai is sort of in here, but he's like feeding yes. everyone. He's feeding with Suwama. 
He's and seen, Voodoo Murderers. Kawa. And yes, uh, the, the Saitos ran in on the DDT Corkin show this weekend to cause a DQ <laughs> in Naya's match. Yeah. And also, and... Ray was in a Dio. <laughs> Which... Yeah, that that is so random. I mean, we also have Okatani, and so we uh, Okatani and Sakaguchi in the uh, Real World Tag League, which is great. But like, why is the Because I feel like because people were commenting that like Okatani is Okatani in the Dio. I don't think he is, right? Um, I don't think so. Because people are like Okatani is like skipping the Dio to be in the Real World Tag League, but then like, Ray Saito is in both. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I do. Very not weird, very weird situation. I don't, I, I don't know where this is going. If we can pivot this back to like burning versus evolution, I think I, I will enjoy it a lot so, more. Um, block A is Yuki Ueno, Tetsuya in Endo, Kazusada Higuchi, Daisuke Sasaki, Harashima, and Yuki Ino. Block B has Chris Brooks, Mao, Yuki Onaya, Canon. Kazuki Harada and Rei Saito. So Okatani and Sakaguchi are not in the Dio. Okay. I mean, I guess they want to focus, but again, like Rei Saito has time to work both. I don't like it. It's very weird. Whatever. Yeah. I'm kind of very strangely curious about what this is going to look like. Yeah. I mean, Saito has to like face off with like Naya. Like, so he has to be in there for a while. Yeah. So like they're they're not in the same block, right? They're in different blocks. No, they're in the same block. Oh, they're in the same block. Okay, yeah. So I guess then they'll just do that there, and then just whatever. Because I was like, if they're not in the same block, that means they both have to come out of their blocks. Which, oh boy, no. But okay, in this case, at least you can just have them. I I don't know, like one eliminates the other, and you can just continue it from there. I guess. Yeah, for sure. And then next up, uh, Minoru Suzuki, Naruki Doi, Hokuto, and Hokuto Mori defeated Hideki Suzuki, Koji Iwamoto, and uh, Ryo Inoue in eight minutes and 20 seconds with a God style pile driver from Suzuki on Inoue. First of all, they cut off Suzuki's theme, or Minoru Suzuki's theme before we got a Kaze Ninore. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. There wasn't much to this match. Yeah. No. No, oh, I mean, it, it was good for what it was. Uh, I did notice the T-shirt, Hokuto. Like, just wrestling in a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. And so what I did notice was kind of like, as they were walking out, yeah. uh, Hideki kind of like, basically like, did some like mentoring, I guess, for like Inoue and all of that. So if he sticks around a bit more permanently, I think that actually would be like, pretty decent like association to get going as well. For sure. And then, oh, did you see Inoue was at that event with uh, Akiyama, Kobashi, Aquad, and Tawe? Oh, yeah, where it was just him and a bunch of grumpy old men. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they seem to like him, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's like little Kawada, basically. Yeah. And then for the very prestigious All Japan TV six-man tag team titles and the KO... Oh, no, this was just for the All Japan TV titles. Yeah, uh, Suwama, Mayumi Ozaki, and Maya Yukihi defeated Yukio Sakaguchi, Saki Akai, and Hideki Okutani in twelve fourteen. When uh, Suwama used the sleeper on uh, Akai to win the titles, um, so I guess uh, they're not going to vacate the titles when Akai retires because she lost it here. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not the best intergender match that All Japan has put on in the last year. It was fine. Poor Suwama can't catch a break. <laughs> He's getting slapped by his teammates. And then everyone in the crowd hated him when he went after a cop. <laughs> and now he finds himself as a champion with uh, Ozaki and Yukihi, which yes. I'm sure will lead to, uh, I'm sure, many hilarious moments. I don't know. I mean, I did like Suwama as this like unwilling uh, kind of underling of Ozaki and Yukihi. Where again, he like the whole team like started when he was still a heel, and now that he's no longer heel, he's like, Oh, yeah, wait, actually, these guys don't really align with like my values anymore now that I'm a good guy again. 
Yeah. Oh no, I'm screwed. So like, I feel like there is at least some like comedy potential there. And again, given how dry these titles have been for like so long, it's like I, I'll take that story. Yes, definitely. So, this is better than like Yoshi Tatsu and whoever versus three random indie guys. Exactly, exactly. So like, I enjoy what they've been doing with the titles, and I guess then the next one, like the logical like next guys to go ever after, are like some sort of like Unagi team or whatever. Yes, that makes sense. Or maybe Ishikawa and like Chi Chi and Zones or something. Yeah, exactly. Like there's stuff you can do with those titles now. So, and I like I said, uh, I mean, not a very high bar, but obviously eruptions like best champions in the history of the title. <laughs> Absolutely. And then in the semi main event, which was billed as a 51st anniversary um, match, June Saito and Ray Saito defeated Reiki Han and Yuma Anzai in 1401 with a doomsday device which is just being called now doom in all caps <laughs> when which Reiki... i would say is an improvement over doomsday device yes um i thought this took a few minutes to get going but once it did it was oh pretty darn good i, I think, think i also just realized why japan specifically doesn't want to call it a doomsday device oh yes that's a very good <laughs> So doom, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I think it was called sudden impact too. There, yeah. Like I don't know if the road, like when the road warriors were in Japan, what they called it then. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought this was pretty good. Uh, I was at by the end. I was a little surprised at the result, though. Yeah. Uh, because I'm also like, if this if this is the result, then why wasn't this just a title match? Yeah, like they just get like another like defense into the rain or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It it was weird that it was a non-title match. But these two teams will be facing each other that. on the final night of the Real World Tag League. Mm -hmm. So good time for them to get their win back and then yeah. win the whole tournament, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then in the main event for the Triple Crown, Yuma Aoyagi defeated Kento Miyahara in 29 minutes and 48 seconds with the Fool for his fifth defense. I was surprised at the result, honestly, although it, I think it all sort of made sense in the end, the, the way they did it. And mm -hmm. I thought this was an excellent match. I thought it was a different match in terms of uh, Yuma was a lot more of the aggressor in this than he had been in past matches between these two. And I just thought the last couple of minutes were incredible, uh, especially when, like, you had, like, you know, Yuma kicking out of the shutdown German and then, like, Miyaha rolling onto the ground to try to grasp his arms and everything. It was just very dramatic, I thought. Mm -hmm. And absolutely up there with some of the, one of the best matches in all Japan this year. Yes, absolutely. I, I will actually have to see where we'll actually like break this one when everything is said and done. But yeah, I thought this was awesome as well. Uh, I haven't even really like settled on a rating yet, to be honest. Like, I think it's probably going to be either like a 4.5 or 4.75. Don't think I'm going to go full five on it. But yeah, I thought this was really amazing. Just, I mean, as you said, like it was a different structure, but I think that is really kind of the point because it is to show the kind of continued kind of progression of Yuma Aoyagi, right? Where he can actually even like over Kento Miyahara, he can be the dominant guy in the match, whereas he very much just used to be not that type of wrestler early on in his career. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's really how they sold it as well during the video package, which by the way, like they'd clearly have some new guy this year doing the video packages because they've been like amazing since, I don't know, like, I would say like around the summer, like around like when the Nagata rain like yeah. went on, right? Like around then, like I think I think the first time I noticed it was for like the Champion Khan, like was like for like the T Hawk versus uh Nagata match, I think, was when I really like started to notice that like all Japan's like video packages had become really good. Yeah. So like clearly there's someone involved in there now that like knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, also, this was anime as hell. <laughs> I need to say that as well. Uh, like that music choice, I I feel like Yuma Aoyagi was like I don't know if he's a big anime fan, but just yeah. based on the fact that his brother very much is, mm -hmm. 
I would say that at least he like had some involvement in the music choice here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so no, but this was great. Just kind of showing kind of like Yuma, like against Kento, like early on. And like, I think that was actually Yuma's debut match, right? Like, I think that was their debut match. Yes, that was that his debut match was debut. against Kento. Yep. Yeah. So like, so showing that and like, just showing the progression and everything through the years and kind of showing like each of their kind of like, like opinions of it essentially, right? Like, obviously I don't really know what they were saying, but I think you kind of get like the vibe of like Kento kind of being like, no, I'm the guy basically, like, I know you're the champion, but I'm like the actual guy. And then Yuma basically being like, well, no, like I'm the champion. So that means I'm the guy now and I'm going to like finally prove that here. And and that's exactly how they structured the match as well, right? Yeah. So uh, like Yuma was like a lot more on the aggression, like probably also like that's, I think kind of came across like towards the end of the match as well, where when Yuma like a like that crowd was incredibly hot when like Yuma like went up for the shutdown suplex and you can actually like feel like the air go out of them when he went down because mm-hmm. people were like oh it's over and then he kicks out and they come roaring right back and uh and then yeah obviously like the desperation of Kento as he's like like trying to go for the shutdown like immediately again because he's like no like I this was supposed to be over so I'm just gonna do it again and just end it and then Yuma breaking out and then they go into the finish from there so yeah no like just perfect pro wrestling basically and I was also surprised but you know what now that we've done it I'm curious to see where we're gonna go with this Yuma reign it might it it won't end at the next defense but I feel like it I'm curious if, if it will last past the end of this year's is what I'd say yeah and I'm a. They haven't announced the next challenger, but I'm assuming it's going to be June Saito. Yeah, or like Hideki because they're doing it in like Sapporo. Yep. Because uh, I know. Um, yeah, they haven't announced who it is, and the tag title match is not the same day as the triple crown match. So you could actually do that. Yeah. So of course we have to talk after the main event. Katsuhika Nakajima appears and completely shocks the crowd. They go insane. Mm-hmm. And he has a bouquet of flowers. And uh, according to translation from Jojo Remy, he's like, oh, I expected you to win. Or something along those lines he said to mm-hmm. Miyahara. And then Miyahara is obviously dazed and whatever. looks away. And then Nakajima hits Kento with the flowers and an incredible angle. One of the best angles of this year. <laughs> no question. Yes. And then just yes, absolutely through the crowd away. I also love like where he like re because he wanted to walk out for like the normal ed- exit. Yeah. And then he like decided against it and just walked out for the crowd instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. No, but the whole angle was just amazing, just top to bottom. When like just Nakajima just comes out and he just has this like look on his face and he has the flowers. And <laughs> it's just and he just walks up to Kento and it's just like, what, you didn't win? Well, well, that kind of ruins all of my plans and just hits him with the flowers. <laughs> yep. No, just tremendous angle. Just, yeah. The, like, these two are just magic. So I really hope that... I mean, obviously, like, it's pretty... I mean, at least to me, I would say it's clear what the plan is. I don't know if yeah, you Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, it's Yuma versus Nakajima on December 31st, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> which yeah, there's, there's a reason why I'm like, you know what, maybe I am willing to spend 180 euros <laughs> to get premium ringside tickets for that. <laughs> yeah, because there'd be a like, ton of stuff yeah, on that show. Exactly, and so like Nakajima wins the title uh, and then basically holds it until Kento wins the carnival and then Kento beats Nakajima to like vanquish him and then Nakajima goes on to do whatever he is. It is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think doing. he's gone within six months. Yeah, yeah. And then either he like goes to like the US or like New Japan or starts something of his own or whatever it is. Um do you think that Nakajima's KOs Yuma? I'm not talking in a shoot. I mean like not not in a shoot. Of... I mean that might happen too, but <laughs> which that would be very unfortunate. Um But do you think that's the angle that you'd want to establish him? I mean, you've, because I would be like, 
do you think that has the danger of like damaging humor? But like they've done a lot to like properly establish him. Yeah. So I would still say it's risky to do that because I feel like there's enough heat on this like Nakajima and Kento feud mm -hmm. without having to like KO Yuma, right? Like there's already heat on Nakajima anyway. Right. You could do it, like maybe it actually really shoots it up to the next thing. But again, I, actually, okay, the, I think it would make sense if he KOs him if it's a short reign. Because then you just want it to get instantly going. Whereas I feel like if you do it and then the reign basically goes on for like four, five months, right? Which it has to mm -hmm. if it goes past the Champion Carnival. Uh, then I feel like that's too long a time for it to really still be meaningful. And it's better if it's just a normal finish. Right, right. So that's the big uh, angle that's got everyone talking after the show. Very exciting. I mean, I wasn't convinced he was showing up in All Japan until I saw him there, right? I was pretty certain, at least. Like, because, like, him also saying that it's like, well, if I would have go to the, if I would have, like, gone to the US, then I would have already announced it. Right? That, that to me was like, well, where else is he going to go then? Like, on a near-term basis that really only left, like, all Japan. Because it was just a very logical, like, thing for them to continue, like, the story. So I was pretty confident it was going to happen. But, yeah, obviously it could have also been, like, him be like, ha, you idiots, you, you, you thought I was going to tell you the truth or whatever. But, no, I, I am happy that they actually are going to continue the story because it rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think that... Nakajima patching things up with Kento to such an extent convinced him to leave. Not that Kento convinced him to leave, mm -hmm. but it sort of gave him ideas for things to do outside of Noah. I could see that. And it might be also that he's just kind of unhappy with his spot on Noah and they weren't going to like mm -hmm. do anything with him. And then once he patched, like I think it's actually both of those, right? Like he wasn't really, probably wasn't really happy with his spot on Noah and then him patching things up with. Kento actually like opened up opportunities for him to like go somewhere else and actually do something of like substance. Well, he's he's guaranteed a third world title reign now. Is it? Probably. Wait, no. What well, do you mean a third world title reign? It's his fourth world title reign if he wins. Oh, he I thought he only won the GHC title. Oh, you can't wrestle one? Yes, of course. <laughs> Prestigious promotion wrestle one. Okay, okay, okay. Uh his four because I want to make Liam cry <laughs> because I'm not sure he would have ever gotten another one if he stayed. Yeah. Oh no, no, there's no way he would have won that title again. Like, like I, I think he would have won the the red belt again, but I don't think he would have won like the proper top belt again. Yeah, but uh, he's probably getting it. I don't yeah. see where, how's the story is going to go. No, I think it doesn't make sense otherwise. Well, like uh, the only way, like I think that's still a proper way to like blow this off as like Kento vanquishes the evil but like not just vanquishes the evil outsider that came into promotion he literally like vanquishes his past yeah and finally on this show we also had the real world tag league participants announced after a long wait so we've got Jun Saito and Rei Saito Yuma Aoyaki and Kento Miyahara somewhat surprising to me because I thought they were going to break them up Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anzai as we all expected also Yep. Uh, Suwama and Hideki Suzuki. That's surprising. That's a team. <laughs> that is a team. Yeah, I, I mean, Suwama it's a shame Dan well isn't up. in here. But yeah, I guess they were like, okay, we can't have him do both the juniors and the tag league. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shuji Shikawa and Renai Abe. Uh, yep. Yukio Sakaguchi and Hideki Okatani. Paul... I was really happy when I saw that. That's gonna Are rock. they going to beat... Uh, Akiyama and Suzuki for the All Asia Tag Titles, and then they're going to pivot it. I mean, I'm all in favor of that. I think this. Okay, team but what was the point of Aki? Well, to end the goddamn reign of and the Yoshitatsu reign, yeah. <laughs> Still, I would have liked more Akiyama in this company. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe he is X. I mean, we all thinking it's Nakajima, but maybe it's him. The maybe it's team both. That sent everyone wild. Hayato Tamar and Galeno Damal. Yes. 
What a gag. Like, if I'm Subama, I'm not letting this guy walk. Like, after the first match, I'm not letting him walk out of that building without either signing a contract or, like, like locking in some more of his dates that he has available, basically. Yeah. Um, Paul, we have some bad news, though, now. Yeah. Uh, Jiro is back, but he's no longer Jiro. He's... Well, I don't know how the it's in <laughs> Kuroshio, Tokyo, so Japan, or Japan, Tokyo, Kuroshio. So fucking stupid. I'm actually surprised he's back only because he was a Tajiri guy. This no, but like this name is worse than Ellen Lindemann. Uh he's also back in DDT. So maybe yeah. that's why he's back here. Yeah, maybe. Uh, or maybe Kyushu Pro is like can't afford him. <laughs> that might also be an option. <laughs> He's teaming with uh, Hanabata or Tachibana. Yeah. So and... yeah. So is he back to Sega Tachibana now, or like? I don't know. Okay. Cool. Uh, but this is a job <laughs> team. Yes. That that's the one positive thing I can take away from this. It's like, okay, he's back, but he's very clearly on like the team that is going to finish last. Yeah. And we have the returning Cyrus and Ryan Davidson. Paul, do you know anything about Ryan Davidson? No. Allegedly, he had a Japan tour already. Yeah, like DDT, DDT in like I think. 2018. Yeah. But I, um, I never saw that. Uh, nope. He's a bigger guy on the Texas Indies. Uh, I saw a clip. He's got some hard chops. So we got something to work with here. Yeah. But he's also 38 already as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think he'll probably be fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I've, like I said, I've been positively surprised by Cyrus, so let's let's see how this guy goes. Can't like I think like they'll probably do better than the uh, uh, Odin and team yeah. that they uh, had like a few years ago. Well, you know, to be fair, I thought their match against the Violent Giants was pretty good. Yes. But like they will send there with the violent giants. <laughs> yeah. Um I would assume Davis is also the fall guy on this team. Yes. I I would assume that as well. And then X and double X. Actually, you know what? You know what, just real quick. Actually, the match I'm looking forward to the most for these two is actually them against the Saitos. Yes, for sure. Because that's just big beef slapping into each other. Um I assume that this is going to... Now, if this is Nakajima, I'm assuming this is going to get announced after his final Noah match. Probably the next day. Yeah. Uh, but then who is the other Rex? Is it Hokuto? I would say Hokuto because he's kind of noticeable in his absence here. Yeah. Or Kojima. obviously it's Kojima because it's X. Yep. Um, or maybe both X's are just Kojima. One is Kojima, one is Kojima in a funny hat. <laughs> Oh, one is the great mummy. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I would say it's Nakajima. I, I think that's the safest assumption. And then Hokuto, I think, make... Like, I think they have, like, similar energy. So I think that would make sense to team those two up. Yeah, I think they'd be a decent uh, little team. I think weren't we actually even already kind of guessing that while we were thinking about who was going to get announced for the real world tag league, if Nakajima well, was going to pop up. Also, uh, I should add... It's X and double X versus Kento and Yuma on the final night. Yeah, so it has to be someone of note. It's got to be Nakajima. It can't just be random people. Yeah, it has to be Nakajima. Uh, also, just for quick, while we're talking about that again, uh, remember when we were kind of anxious about potentially what if Noah approaches Kento? Yes. To like continue the whole storyline? And it turns out, no, actually, it's the opposite. It's actually all Japan poaching Nakajima <laughs> to continue the story. At least for a couple months, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is the real world tech league lineup. And then very quickly, um just the Hokkaido tour that starts next week, um on October thirty first. In their first show is in um Imakane. Uh we got uh Rio Inoue versus Fuminori Abe. Yes. I I I I want to watch I I am re I have unreasonable expectations for this match. Not gonna yes. lie. 
Uh, we've also got Black Menso Ray versus um, Brute Issei, who's now going by like Hoko Kumagoro or something, and Noriyuki Yoshida. Oh, Kumagoro is back after. Because remember, that was uh, Kuma Arashi's original name. Right. But this is Brute Issei. It's just going to make things very confusing. Yes. Uh, and Noriyuki Yoshida, who is a uh, Hokkaido indie wrestler that's appeared in All Japan and DDT in the past. I think he's very solid, actually. And then we got mm-hmm. Suwama and Dan versus Takao Mori and Yoshitatsu. Ren Ayabe and Hikaru Sato versus... I mean, they kind of have to win that one right now. Yeah, or unless do. we're literally doing turning this into a, like a full comedy like title challenge where they just lose all of the titles in the league. Maybe it's a story that tells Yoshitatsu's exit from the company. I guess so, yeah. Where it's like literally like they like get squashed in like five minutes and then even Omori is like, I don't want to have anything to do with you and he just walks out like Peter. And Yoshitatsu exits stage left with doing the peanuts walk. (laughs) Uh, Shuji Shikawa, Atsuki, Aoyagi, Rising Hayato versus Minoru Suzuki, Suzuki, Hokuto Omori and Jonathan Gresham. Yeah, and that, that, that is gonna a be the great six men. Yeah, and what I assume is going to be the main event, Kento Miyahara and Yuma Aoyaki versus Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anzai. Little tag week preview. On November 1st, um, this is a funny three-way match. Hikaru Sato versus Fuminori Abe versus Jonathan Gresham. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's probably going to be really good, but I would rather see like any of these men in like a singles match. Yep. We've got Shuji Shikawa and uh, Kumagoro Katami uh, versus Takao Omori and Yoshitatsu. Which I would assume, like... They're winning anything here. It's going to be this one, right? Yeah. Sorry, his name is Kumagoro Hokai. Um, okay. Is what he's going by now. And then, um, yeah, Suwama and Dan versus Minoru Suzuki and Hokuto. Renayabe and Nor- Noriyuki Yoshida versus the Saitos. Then Kento, Yuma Aoyagi, and uh, Asuki Aoyagi versus Ryuki Honda, Yuma Anza, and Ryo Inoue, which could rock. And on November 2nd, we've got Hikaru Sato versus Kumagura Hokai. Uh, we've got Asuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato versus Black Lancer and Jonathan Gresham. We got Hokuto Mori versus Noriyuki Yoshida. Uh, Takao Mori, Yoshitatsu versus Suji Shikawa and Ren Ayabe. Are they going to win that? I don't know. I, yeah, I prob- like I'm really, like I said, I'm just really confused about this whole title challenge. So I think it would be very funny if they just lead, lose all of the lead up matches. Uh, Suwama and Dan versus the Saitos, which could be pretty good. We got Kento. Miyahara, Yuma Aoyagi, and Fuminori Abe versus Ryuki, Honda, Yuma Anzai, and Ryo Inoue. That's going to rock. I still don't really get a good feeling who's going to be the title challenger like based off of these cards. Um, no. Well, on the third is the World Tag Team titles in Bihoro. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then, which is the title versus Omori and Yoshitatsu. Then we got Black Mansoray versus Renai Abe. Hokuto Omori versus Ryo Inoue. Hikaru Sato and Dan Tamara versus Kumagoro Hokai and Noriyuki Yoshida. Atsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato versus Fuminori Abe and Jonathan Gresham, which is something to watch. And then it's being billed as the 100th anniversary of Bihoro. Kento Miyahara, Yuma Aoyagi, and Suwama versus Suji Ishikawa, Ryuki Honda, and Yuma Anzai. Then on the fourth, in uh, Iwa Mizawa, we've got uh, Aski Oyagi and Black Mensure versus Hikaru Sato and Totakaya. Um, yeah, no Shuji idea Shikawa, who that is. I don't know. Uh, Shuji Shikawa and Ryo Inoue versus the Saitos. Takao Omori and Yoshitatsu versus Minoru Suzuki and Hokuto Omori. Are these going to give those guys a speed run uh, through all their tag teams? I really don't know. I, but they can't be beating all of these guys, right? That, know, that like okay. that's just especially if you just like that's what I mean. Like it feels like they're just going to lose all of these matches. Yeah. No. Uh, Suwama, Dan Tamara, and Kumagura Hokai versus Rokki Honda, Yuma Anzai, and Noriyuki Yoshida. Special singles match: Yuma Aoyagi versus Ren Ayabe. I want to see what Yuma can get out of Ren. 
Yeah. Actually, could it be then Chuji Ishikawa as the challenger? Maybe. We'll see. But we'll go through what we've got announced on those shows. Mm -hmm. So, and... So the day before, this is the preliminary match for the junior title. Kento Miyahara, Rising Hayato, and Jonathan Gresham versus T-Hawk, Al Lindemann, and Fuminori Abe. That's a I mean, match. That's rock. Yeah, that, 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 that's a great match. And then on the 5th, it's a double header. So this show starts at noon in Hokkaido in that uh, hotel in Misia Sapporo, which is where they had that Kento versus Yuma match last year. So we got Yoshitatsu versus Renai Abe. I... Pray to God, Ren wins that. <laughs> Atsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato versus Karasad and Ryo Inoue. Yeah, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. Takawa Mori and Ch Takaya, or whatever this wrestler's name is, versus and Noriyuki Yoshida versus Black Mensa Ray, Fuminori Abe, and Kumagora Hokai. Dan Tamura versus T Hawk. Uh, Kento Miyahara. Uh, Yuma Aoyagi and Suji Ishikawa versus Suwama, Ryuki Honda, and Yuma Anzai. And then uh, the junior title, uh, Al Lindemann versus Jonathan Gresham. And then, and this is like Hokuto Mori's Hokkaido Triumphal Return special tag match. Uh, Minoru Suzuki and Hokuto Mori versus Jun Saito and Rei Saito. So poor Hokuto Omori in his hometown return thing. I mean, it's a non-title match, right? So there is at least a chance that he's not yeah, going to lose. Yeah, but I don't think... Well, I suppose. But I wouldn't hold my breath, in all honesty. No. And then the evening show that starts at 5 p.m., we've got Takao Mori and Yoshitatsu versus Hikaru Sato and Sidney Shota Stevens, who is a <laughs> uh, American-born wrestler. But I think he's half Japanese, and he moved there a few years ago. And he's a wrestler for Hokuto Hokuto Pro in Hokkaido. And he's like um a short, stout guy that does some hardcore. It looks like. So I'm just okay. Sort of that's curious. not what I would have guessed from that name. Yeah. Uh, and then Black Mensa Ray and Two Takia versus Noriyuki Yoshida and Kumagoro Hokai. And then uh, Aski Oyagi, Al Lindemann, Fuminori Abe versus Dan Tamara, Rising Hayato, and Jonathan Gresham. So, I don't know. There's still stuff that could be put in there. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it, like I said, I just don't really, like, because just looking at who is already announced for this card... Right for the triple crown card, so that like that are like definitely out on like getting a title shot, and I mean it's still possible that like it's Shuji Ishikawa because he's not booked yet. But again, then neither is like Suwama or Kento or like. Well, but obviously, I mean, those guys aren't getting title either. shots here. Like, Hideki's not on the sense. tour. He think so. Hideki is not on the tour, so yeah, I'm I don't like they just I... announced it's going to be a title match, but I don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. I'm leaning um, June Saito, but we'll see. June Saito, yeah. I, I mean, mean I, maybe. It... I mean, you got Ray Saito in in the Dio. You want to give a big match for June? Get these guys singles exp single experience as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can definitely do that, and it's literally just because I mean, it's it's both of these title defenses are just going to be filler defenses. Like both the tag title match as well as the triple crown match, whatever it is going to be, is going to be a filler match. Yeah, for sure. Because I I would bet good money that they're not gonna do Nakajima versus Yuma on like a random like Sapporo show. No, no, definitely not. Um, so that is all Japan. Uh, they're back, baby. <laughs> they definitely are. Yes. Um, we've been saying it, but more and more people are saying it too. So we'll be back after, um, the remember when these promotions were like relatively close in terms of like excitement levels. Yeah. It's well, definitely not um, the case anymore. <laughs> well, Ken, like if anyone could turn Noah around, it's Keno. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, I will say actually like the whole Monday magic, uh, kind of has, I'm enjoying like, Monday me magic. interested. I'm yes. enjoying Monday magic as well. I'm just like. Just so done with Jake, yes. even more than I was last year, <laughs> which is 
which is saying something <laughs> because by I literally made a whole video about like just being completely done with Jake, and then he and then he's just like, no, actually, like literally, he's like, hold my beer, I can make an even less interesting like 2023 than my 2022. Yeah, well, I mean, the other thing is that obviously, you know, the first half of the year had the Moodle retirement tour mm -hmm. and everything, but. From the midway point of the year, I mean, all Japan is really not that far behind mm -hmm. from Noah. In fact, it might even be ahead of them. It's pretty sure if we if we like do the data, I'm pretty sure like all Japan is ahead because they like their hurricanes outdraw like like the Nagoya show, right? That was outdrawn by yeah. Noah in uh, by all Japan and hurricanes. I'm pretty sure like without the whole mood of retirement, I'm pretty sure all Japan is actually ahead of Noah, which it very much shouldn't be because of the like budget because of what 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 the means of both promotions are and like the theoretical like marketing muscle and all of that yeah uh but yeah i, I think really noah's downfall at the moment is that they don't have an identity because for better or for worse while they were like the muto show they at least had an identity yeah and they don't have an identity at the moment that's their big problem yeah that's definitely the case but and all Japan has an identity. It's the big guy show. It is the big guy show. Which so, is funny that you bring in Akashima. <laughs> well, I mean, if I look, this is like going to be like Nakajima's first real opportunity to be a draw. And I think he will be a draw in all Japan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, it would fit timeline wise around the time where like Go Shiozaki kind of turned things around. Only this time it will actually happen in all Japan instead. Mm hmm. Well, because it's a little different because Nakajima was in all Japan for years, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, he's got the, the very story with Kento. That's not something you could just book out of nothing. That's yeah. you know, real life heat, brother. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Like that's still very, like, obviously it's patched up, but like they can still, like it's still, I think it's still fresh enough where they can still like very much include some lingering feelings of resentment into the actual like mattress and everything. And it just Absolutely. helps a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, I could be wrong in Nakajima bombs in all Japan, but if there was ever an opportunity where he can draw, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. This is his chance. If he's, if he's bombs again, then I'm just, I'm like, I will enjoy his mattress, but please don't book this guy as a top guy ever again, basically. Which might hurt his freelancing prospects. Is what? It might hurt his freelancing prospects, though. Yeah. Oh, yes. No, for sure. Like, he very much has a very heavy interest in, like, drawing, like, good money uh, on this uh, on this whole run as well. Because, again, like, wherever he goes afterwards, if he can actually point to just recently, look, I drew all of these great houses I mean, in, all Japan, in all Japan. if he flops in all Japan, we can sign for more money. Call him? No. Hmm? If he flops in all Japan, New Japan's not going to call him. No, absolutely not. Why would they? Yeah. Gonna end up in like Kyushu Pro or whatever. Or oh, Beck and Noah. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, Kyushu Pro, remember when we thought Perry Von Vicious and Rip Bison were coming to all Japan? Yeah, no, I was saying they were going to Kyushu Pro. Oh, yes, did, were you? Please I continue. Thought they were <laughs> well, they were, I thought they were going to come, come, to, call, come to all Japan just because they kind of sort of fit the look and everything. Yeah. But they ended up in Kyushu. Yeah. No, but my thing was like, I think I looked at their like Twitter profiles and they liked like a bunch of Kyushu Pro stuff. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, that's probably going to be it. I have not seen any of their stuff in Kishu Pro. No, I've kind of, I was like, I wanted to keep track of it and it is pretty accessible still, but I haven't really had a reason to like look into it. Maybe, maybe I'll do that as like a project when I have like a bit of time. Just sit down and like binge a bunch of Kishu Pro. Sure. I mean, same with Big Japan, really. Like, I wanted to keep up with Big Japan a lot more, but yeah, I fall behind a little time bit. Time keeps getting in the way. <laughs> I gotta do that before the end of the year. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because I, I mean, what I've at least heard is that like, like both like Yuya and uh, Ishikawa are doing like good stuff there right now. So I've heard that too. And yeah. obviously, they have the astronauts and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I definitely need to do like a catch up. I mean, it is about like if we're like a week away from the turn of the month, so I think. If I resubscribe to Core on the first of the month, I think I have like a lot of stuff I can watch during November. All right. So we'll be back um, 
after the Noah show and then once the All Japan tour in Hokkaido gets underway, I think that will be a good thing. That's a lot of shows to watch though for All Japan. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is all of them except for uh the Sapporo shows are VOD. Which yeah, that's not gonna make things any easier when I don't have like the when you have to like decide yourself when the time is to watch them. Yeah. So uh I think we might just have to like just list the best matches on those shows. <laughs> that's a lot to go through and everything like that. All right. So for, for Paul, I'm Gerard, and we'll see you very soon. Hola, hola. My name is Ricardo. I am the host of the Lucha Jovers podcast here in the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. We are a Spanish speaking show dedicated to discussing and analyzing pro wrestling from all across the world. From AW to CMLL, we talk about American wrestling, Japanese wrestling, and of course, Lucha Libre. If something big happened in the pro wrestling world, we will talk about it. So if you know Spanish or have a friend that knows Spanish or want to practice your Lucha Libre pronunciations, go listen to the Lucha Jovers podcast right here in the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Nos vemos por ahí. Hello, everyone. My name is Taylor. And I'm Kelly. And we are the co-hosts of Jumping Bomb Audio, the podcast all about Joshi Pro Wrestling here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Every other Monday, we are with you talking about the biggest news in Joshi, along with show reviews, previews, and much, much more. So if you're new to Joshi or you've been a longtime fan, this is the show for you. We've got something for everyone here. So check us out, Jumping Bomb Audio.